this video we're going to look at some proteins that you would find inside the cell called cytoskeletal proteins and anything that is inside the cell is called intracellular. We'll look at some proteins that are outside of the cell called extracellular proteins. Those are the proteins that hold cells together in tissues. And then we're going to look at some junctions, so proteins that connect cells together. Those are cellular junction proteins. Here we have a diagram of a section of a cell. Here we have a plasma membrane and a plasma membrane. You can see the rough endoplasmic reticulum inside. Here's a mitochondrion, so that kind of just orients you. And you can see that we have a bunch of different proteins inside the cell. There's three main categories of these that I want to focus on. First, we will look at the largest one called a microtubule. Microtubules look like big, hollow um, log structures, and they are composed of individual proteins called tubulin. The main function of microtubules is to transport molecules inside the cell. We can have motor proteins that can kind of almost walk along the microtubule and they can carry vesicles that are filled with proteins or substances in the cell. So it can transport, it can use the microtubules kind of like a highway. Some other structures where we see microtubules are things like cilia and flagella. So think of a sperm tail or a flagellum on a bacterial cell, how it can help with locomotion. The last place where we will talk about microtubules in other videos is looking at centrioles. Centrioles are the organelle that we talked about in the previous video that helps to separate chromosomes during cell division. So the next structure is called intermediate filaments, and that's all of these structures here, and they act like the framing of a house or the scaffolding. It helps organelles to be in the right place. Some, there's a bunch of different kinds of proteins that can make up intermediate filaments, but one you may have heard of is called keratin. Keratin is the protein that you would find in your skin and your hair that gives them um, a hardness. The last one is actin filaments, and they are sometimes called microfilaments. And these are proteins inside the cell that are usually found somewhere near the cell membrane. These are used for cell movement in a different way than microtubules. So microtubules help to transport substances. Microfilaments help the cell to actually move. Think about an amoeba and how it sort of contracts its cell membrane and can move along. Our immune cells do this when they engulf pathogens. Microfilaments are also used when we have cell division and the two new cells are going to pinch in the middle and become two new cells. So that process is called cytokinesis. Those things involve actin filaments. The next um, component I want to look at is our extracellular matrix proteins. These are proteins that are found outside of the cell and they have a few different functions. There are many, many different kinds of proteins that you would find outside of cells. The five that I wanna look at today are the main ones that you would find in almost any tissue. Some tissues have more or less of certain substances. So we're just gonna look at the main um, function of five of the most common proteins in the extracellular matrix. First, we have collagen. Collagen is a protein that makes tissues strong. We have a lot of collagen in tissues like connective tissue, so bones and skin and cartilage, um, ligaments, tissues that need to be very strong. Elastin is a protein that makes tissues stretchy. Think about when you have a rubber band and you stretch it, when you let go, it goes back to its normal position. So that's elastin. 
We would have elastin in tissues that need to be stretchy. Our skin, our bladder, our lungs, um, blood vessels that need to dilate and constrict. They would have higher amounts of elastin. Integrins are proteins that span the membrane. These are really important for connecting the outside of the cell with the inside of the cell. So this is the intracellular side and its main role is in signaling. Cells need to be able to communicate with each other so that cells can function together as a tissue. Fibronectin is a connecting protein. It connects the integrin proteins with the other proteins in the extracellular matrix. And then lastly, we have proteoglycans. I want you to notice here that there's little things sticking out from this central protein. This um, proteoglycan protein has carbohydrate groups or sugars connected. The sugars connected to the protein make this a glycoprotein. Glycoproteins play a really important role in attracting water molecules. So one of the main purposes of proteoglycans in our tissues is to hydrate the tissues. So we have a lot of proteoglycan in our skin or our joints. Here we can see that we have three major types of junctions, which are ways that cells can be connected to each other. The first one is anchoring junctions. Anchoring junctions are composed of a bunch of different kinds of proteins, but one of the major types that you would see in many tissues is called cadherin proteins. These hold cells together tightly, kind of like Velcro. In tissues where there's a lot of movement and the cells need to stay connected together, there will be a lot of adherins or anchoring junctions. Sometimes these are called adherins junctions. Over here we have tight junctions. Tight junctions are composed primarily of proteins called occludins. The main role of these is to form a barrier. An example that I want to talk about is the blood-brain barrier. So in your brain where you have all of your neurons and we have glial cells that help the nervous system function, we also have blood vessels. We don't want any substance from the blood vessels just getting into where the neurons are. That environment has to be tightly regulated. So the connection between the endothelial cells of the blood vessel and where the neurons are, there, those cells have tight junctions. So it forms the blood-brain barrier. And then the last one that I want to talk about is gap junctions. So gap junctions are channels that form in between cells. They are composed of proteins called connexins. And this allows very specific signaling molecules to move in between cells so that cells can communicate together and function as a whole. One example of where we would see a lot of gap junctions would be the heart. So when the heart has to contract, all of those cardiomyocytes need to work together and contract at the same time so the heart can pump the blood out. So gap junctions allow those signaling molecules to go between cells very quickly so that those cells can be coordinated and have a coordinated function. Here is a chart showing all of the proteins that we just talked about. Intracellular means it's inside the cell. Extracellular means it is outside of the cell. And intercellular means it is between cells. I've put the main protein that you would find in each of these kind of structures and one word that describes its main function.